prosecution presented a five-hour recording of a 2012 interview between investigators and Ford. In it, Ford repeatedly denied having anything to do with Kreitz's death. He said he had the law on his side in his access dispute with Kreitz, and he had no reason to kill him. Investigators challenged Ford and said they saw inconsistencies in his story, including what he was doing immediately after the time Kreitz made his last known phone call. They pointed to images from a neighbor's camera that showed his truck going up around that time. On Wednesday, attorneys questioned Dave Peterson, one of the investigators who conducted the interview. Ford's defense argued, despite extensive searching, officers hadn't been able to identify where Kreitz was killed and the prosecution couldn't prove it happened immediately after that call. To this day, you don't know where Michael Kreitz breathed his last breath. That's correct. Defense attorneys also argued many other residents in the Turk Road area besides Ford had problems with Kreitz. Peterson said more than 100 calls for service had been filed from the area. One day, somebody would like somebody, and then they wanted somebody else in trouble. It was just, it was a continuous circle up there for a while. Prosecutors also called a witness who analyzed location data from Kreitz and Ford's cell phone calls and found Ford's calls after Kreitz was last seen were routed through several different cell towers, including one near McDonald Pass. But the data only provides an estimate of where the phones were located at the time. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. The Biden administration has spent more than a billion dollars on funds to help communities use different strategies to battle the opioid epidemic, one of those strategies being harm reduction. The phrase harm reduction refers to a series of actions and policies meant to lessen the consequences associated with drugs and drug use. The encompassing practices such as medication-assisted therapy to deal with addiction and the controversial concept of giving away of drug pipes. National correspondent Vanessa Mishanya went to to Portland, Oregon to meet people on the front lines of harm reduction to understand more about this and ask why they say the resources they provide are life-saving. So we have a plethora of different size syringes depending on what people want. We supply smoking supplies, so new shiny clean meth pipes to reduce injection behaviors. To Haven Wheelock, each box of supplies stored here has a purpose, to prevent people from dying. Things like smoking supplies are a really important tool. One, you're not going to get HIV, hepatitis C, smoking drugs, but also it allows for people to like use more slowly. Wheelock runs the Drug Users Health Services Program at Portland's Outside Inn, a medical and youth service nonprofit. Around 100 people a day come in off the street and receive safer use drug supplies. We are one of the oldest harm reduction programs actually in the country. Harm reduction practices started during the AIDS epidemic of the 80s, where clean syringes were given away in hopes to stop the spread of the virus. A movement spearheaded by drug users, it became an accepted practice by municipalities and healthcare workers because of its effectiveness. Harm reduction really plays a role in keeping people safe. Wheelock says the work goes beyond the supplies the nonprofit gives out. At the core, it's building relationships with people who come in, being there for them when and if they are finally ready to accept treatment, and then setting them up with resources to help end their addiction. People aren't going to change behaviors if they don't feel like they're worthy of that change. We're meant to sort of capture people when they're ready and interested in treatment, stabilize them, and then work with them to find a long-term prescriber. Dr. Bradley Buchheit is an addiction medicine physician at Oregon Health and Science University, working at their Harbor Clinic, which stands for Harm Reduction and Bridges to Care Clinic. When someone addicted to opioids or methamphetamines tells Wheelock they're ready for treatment, they are then put in touch with this clinic. The harm reduction that we practice in Harbor really is low barrier on-demand access to FDA-approved medications for opioid use disorder. The harm reduction to treatment pipeline these organizations have created is important, Bukhide says, because you want the least amount of time between the user's change of heart and treatment, something he believes needs to happen more across the country. Until those treatment services are easier to access than street drugs, it's going to be really hard for us to get ourselves out of the current crisis. Part of like how I kind of center harm reduction like in my heart and in my mind is really like it is not okay to take away someone's only coping mechanism if they don't have anything else. 
Critics of these treatment and prevention plans say all it does is enable drug use and just replaces one drug with another. I, I push back on this idea that enabling people is bad. I want to enable people to be as healthy as possible. Are we making drug use easier in the lives of people who use drugs easier? Yeah, we are. Because making it harder is harming people. Punishing people who are already hurting if that was going to work, it would have worked already. People like Wheelock and Dr. Buchheit see harm reduction strategies as a chain reaction. Empathy builds trust. Trust can lead to healthier decisions. Those decisions can lead to being free of addiction. Without access to naloxone, without access to safer use supplies, people are going to die. And when people die, there is no hope. A summer film program at Helena College is looking for more applicants. I'll have the detail. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 530 News. Helena College is looking for students for an award-winning film and media program. MTN's Tom Buchanan has the details on how to apply. A summer film program is looking for prospective students to apply for a creative filmmaking experience. It can help you build a portfolio and give you a little sample of what a career in communications, the media arts, filmmaking, gaming can be like. The two and a half week long summer film program works to give students hands-on experience with the process of filmmaking. The three year long program is made possible by a grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities. High school juniors, seniors, and recent high school graduates can work in a team to create a film around a central theme. Last summer, the group focused on a film about the Montana State Capitol building and how Montana became a state. And the previous summer, the group made a film about the historical, artistic, and cultural impacts of the Spanish flu in Montana, drawing relation to COVID-19. And the films from these programs have created some serious ripples across the film community. Showing in multiple international film festivals, both of the films have won awards from the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, the same academy who award the Emmys. Mara Flynn, a current student at MSU in the film program there, has participated in the Helena College Summer Film Program for the past two years, both as a student and a TA. She says that being in this program made her more confident in her collegiate path. And then I did this program and it definitely solidified some things for me of like, oh, this is more of what this is gonna be like and I definitely do wanna do it. So it was very helpful. The final film to come out of this program will center around the theme of the impact of fishing in Montana. The program runs from July 10th through the 26th. Students can apply online for the free program. A review of applications will occur on June 15th, and Dr. Laskin encourages students to get their applications in soon. Even more than the filmmaking aspect was getting to learn more about the state I'm from and the state I grew up in. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you can take away from it. And you'll never know unless you sign up, so. Reporting in Helena, Tom Buchanan, MTN News. A Great Falls teen is pursuing a prestigious musical opportunity. It's one that will take him thousands of miles away to a different continent and one he needs your help to achieve. Tonight, MTN's Coulter Anstead is spending some time with him to learn about the opportunity. For those who don't recognize it, this year is a bassoon. This one in particular is currently played by Great Falls teen Scotland Brown. He's trying to raise money, so this time next year, he can be preparing to show off his musical talents at venues across Europe. I have been playing the bassoon for almost four years now. 14-year-old Scotland Brown loves to play the bassoon. About the half of eighth grade year is when I like started actually doing stuff and like learned the full chromatic scale and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized like this is my instrument. Scotland was recently nominated by his high school band director to participate in a trip to Europe in 2024 with Northern Musicians Abroad, which takes high school musicians from North Dakota and Montana to perform internationally. A few of his fellow bandmates were also nominated. We're going to London, we're going to see like the big bridge, and we're, we're going to go to Paris and go to the Eiffel Tower. Um, we're going to the Matterhorn, 
in Munich. We're going to a whole bunch of places and just playing concerts there. To go, he needs to raise $8,000, so he set up a GoFundMe account. I'm really excited because I really do want to go. Scotland's father says Scotland has received a lot of support so far. We are so grateful for our family, our friends, the strangers. Uh, I, we can't tell you how grateful we are, and it's been exciting to see. Watching my son just grow and for the passion of music is absolutely amazing. You can find a link to the GoFundMe account in this story on our website. In Great Falls, Colter Anstat, MTN News. Showers and thunderstorms are likely tomorrow, especially during the afternoon and the evening. And I'll have more details about that precipitation in my full forecast after the break. Storm Trucker weather starts now with Chief Meteorologist Ryan Dennis. Welcome back, everyone. It is warm outside right now. As temperatures are currently in the mids, upper 70s, and low to mid 80s. And on the Opportunity Bank, I can't wait to have a good amount of sunshine around this morning, but the clock has been on the increase over the past several hours, and scattered showers and thunderstorms have also been developing throughout Montana over the past several hours. And a few of these thunderstorms, especially in north central Montana, have been on the severe side with damaging winds and large hail. Around the Helena area, we've had a few showers and storms, and that's still the case right now. And a larger storm system is currently located over southern Nevada and southern California. And this storm system is going to be working its way towards the northeast as we go through the next couple of days. And this storm system is going to provide us with a very moist southeasterly to easterly flow over the next few days. And that's going to actually tap into some moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, which is going to bring a lot of moisture into Montana, which means that showers and thunderstorms are likely and some of the precipitation that falls is going to be heavy at times, which could lead to some localized flash flooding. As we go through the rest of this evening and into tonight, there will continue to be a few scattered showers and storms, but more locations will remain dry than sea precipitation. Once we get past sunset, a lot of that precipitation, at least in the central and western part of the state, will dissipate, but there will continue to be some scattered showers and storms east of I-15 as we go through tonight. For tomorrow, we are going to have partly to mostly cloudy skies throughout the day. And during the morning, not a lot of precipitation, but there will be some scattered showers and storms. And then as we head into tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening, it is definitely going to be wet. Rain showers and thunderstorms are likely around the Helena area throughout the afternoon and the evening. So